Assalamu alaikum and good day everyone. This is a lecture on urinary tract infection in children. Before we start with the lecture, let's go through a case study. A four-year-old girl, a known case of spina bifida, presented with high-grade fever with chills and rigor for two days. She also complained of constant bilateral loin pain associated with two episodes of non-bilious vomiting. Because of her underlying illness, she performed intermittent urinary catheterization three times per day. On examination she was febrile, lethargic, and dehydrated. Abdominal palpation revealed bilateral balatable kidneys and loin tenderness. Systemic examinations revealed lower motor neuron signs over her lower limbs. Questions What is your provisional diagnosis? What are her risk factors to develop this illness? What are the likely causative organisms? What is the investigation you would send to confirm the diagnosis? What are other relevant investigations in this patient? What are the treatments indicated in this patient? I hope you will be able to answer all these questions after listening to this lecture. At the end of this lecture, the students should know. The risk factors. Etiologies. Symptoms and signs. Investigations to diagnose. Treatment. And complications of urinary tract infections in children. In terms of epidemiology, urinary tract infection comprises 5% of febrile illnesses in early childhood. The highest rates of UTI are among boys less than 1 year and girls less than 6 years of age. These are important terminologies that you need to understand. Significant bacteriuria. Pyelonephritis. Cystitis and asymptomatic bacteriuria. I will explain each of these in the next few slides. Significant bacteriuria is the presence of more than 100,000 colony forming unit of single organism per mil of urine. This is an important diagnostic criteria for urinary tract infection. Pyelonephritis is infection of renal parenchyma. The child is symptomatic, usually presenting with fever and loin tenderness as well as having evidence of significant bacteriuria. Cystitis is infection of the bladder. The child has symptoms such as dysuria, hematuria, or urgency to micturate, as well as having evidence of significant bacteriuria. Asymptomatic bacteriuria is the presence of bacteriuria in otherwise a well and asymptomatic child. There are several risk factors that predispose a child to have urinary tract infection. Babies born with congenital renal anomalies such as vesicoureteric reflux, posterior urethral valve or pelvi-ureteric junction obstruction, are at risk of developing urinary tract infection. Children with spina bifida may have neurogenic bladder, leading to urinary stasis which predisposes them to develop urinary tract infection. UTIs are more common in girls compared to boys because of their shorter urethra. Constipation and dysfunctional voiding lead to incomplete bladder emptying which increases the risk of urinary tract infection. Another risk factor of UTI is bladder catheterization, which introduces organisms into the bladder. In the next few slides, I will explain in more details regarding vesicoureteric reflux, posterior urethral valve or pelvi-ureteric junction obstruction. Vesicoureteric reflux is a condition where there is backflow of urine from the bladder into the ureter, and in more severe cases, up to the kidney leading to hydronephrosis. The etiologies can be primary or secondary. In primary VUR, there is genetic predisposition although the exact mode of inheritance is unclear. In this case, the functional valve at vesicoureteric junction is incompetent, leading to reflux of urine from the bladder into the ureter. In secondary VUR, the reflux occurs because of either neurogenic bladder, or bladder outlet obstruction such as in posterior urethral valve. Posterior urethral valves is a condition that occurs only in boys. 
In this condition there is presence of membrane at posterior part of urethra. This causes poor urinary flow through the urethra which manifests as poor stream of urine in the child. The bladder outlet obstruction inevitably leads to urinary retention, with secondary vesico-ureteric reflux. In PUJ obstruction, there is blockage at pelvi-ureteric junction causing reduced flow of urine from renal pelvis into ureter. This leads to hydronephrosis. Next I will talk on the etiological agents. E. coli is the most common cause of urinary tract infection. Other common causative organisms are Klebsiella species, Enterococcus faecalis, and Proteus mirabilis. Urinary tract infection due to Proteus mirabilis is associated with presence of renal stone. Pseudomonas aeruginosa is an uncommon cause of urinary tract infection. It usually occurs in patients with indwelling urinary catheter or urinary stasis such as neurogenic bladder. The symptoms of urinary tract infection differ according to age groups and whether the child has cystitis or pyelonephritis. I will elaborate on these points in the next few slides. In infants and young children, the symptoms of urinary tract infection are fairly nonspecific such as fever, vomiting, irritability and lethargy. So the diagnosis depends on high index of suspicion and should be considered in any infant and young children with unexplained fever. Sometimes they may present with hematuria, offensive urine, or diarrhea. In neonatal period, they may develop prolonged neonatal jaundice. Older children with cystitis typically complain of dysuria. Suprapubic pain. Increased frequency of micturition. Urgency to micturate. Urge incontinence. Or hematuria. Those with pyelonephritis usually have high-grade fever associated with loin pain. They may also have nausea and vomiting. When examining a child who is suspected to have urinary tract infection, there are several signs that we need to look for. Firstly we need to plot the weight and height on the growth chart because a child with recurrent urinary tract infection, especially those complicated with renal impairment, may have failure to thrive. The blood pressure can be high in renal impairment. If the child has pyelonephritis complicated with septicemia, he or she may have signs of poor peripheral perfusion such as cold, pale hands with capillary refill time more than 2 seconds, tachycardia, poor pulse volume and hypotension. Presence of loin tenderness suggests that the child has pyelonephritis. We also need to look for signs indicative presence of risk factors which predispose the child to have urinary tract infection. These include balatable kidney due to hydronephrosis. Palpable bladder due to urinary retention in the case of posterior urethral valve or neurogenic bladder. Genitalia abnormalities which may be associated with urinary tract anomalies. Poor anal tone and lower motor neuron signs in lower limbs as in spina bifida. Sacral dimple, hair tuft, or swelling over the lower spine which may indicate presence of spina bifida occulta. The investigations can be divided into urine, blood, and imaging. Proper collection of urine is important to ensure accurate diagnosis and to avoid contamination of the sample. Suprapubic aspiration is the gold standard method for urine collection in infant less than 6 months since bladder is an abdominal organ at this age. Catheterization is an alternative method in young children who are not toilet trained yet. Clean catch sample of urine is suitable for older child who are toilet trained. Bag urine specimen is not recommended because of high contamination rate. Once collected, the urine sample should be sent to the laboratory as soon as possible. The initial investigation on the urine is urinalysis or known as urine dipstick. The presence of nitrite, leukocyte, and blood suggests the diagnosis of urinary tract infection. The diagnosis of urinary tract infection is confirmed by urine culture which grows more than 100,000 colony forming unit of single organism per ml of urine. 
The antibiotic sensitivity testing on the grown organism can help to guide the choice of appropriate antibiotic for definitive treatment. Blood investigations are indicated in young children with urinary tract infection, or if there are clinical features suggestive of pyelonephritis. Older children with symptoms of cystitis but otherwise well, generally do not require blood investigations. The investigations that should be sent include full blood count, blood culture, and renal profile. The full blood count may show leukocytosis with neutrophilia. In patient with pyelonephritis complicated by bacteremia or septicemia, the blood culture may reveal growth of the causative organism. Renal profile is important to rule out renal impairment which is a known long-term complication of urinary tract infection in children. Ultrasound of kidney, ureter, and bladder is the first line imaging for children with urinary tract infection. However it is not indicated in all cases. It is indicated in children less than 3 years. For children more than 3 years old, ultrasound KUB should be done in those who have clinical findings suggestive of underlying urinary tract abnormalities, such as palatable kidney, palpable bladder, or poor stream of urine. Other indications are recurrent urinary tract infections or evidence of renal impairment. Using the ultrasound, we can look at the number of kidneys as some children are born with single kidney. Size of the kidneys can be measured. This is important as scarred kidneys are smaller than the normal ones. Ultrasound can also detect gross abnormalities of urinary tracts such as hydronephrosis, hydrouretor, and pelvi-ureteric junction obstruction. Mixture rating cystourethrogram is indicated in a child with UTI when abnormality of urinary tract is detected in the ultrasound. It is used primarily to diagnose vesico-ureteric reflux. The procedure involves catheterization of the bladder. Then contrast material is infused into the bladder via the catheter. Subsequently X-ray is taken when the child is mixture rating. In this picture, the X-ray on the, the right is normal, whereas the one on the left shows evidence of severe bilateral vesico-ureteric reflux with hydrourethrogram and hydronephrosis. Dimercaptosuccinic acid scan is indicated in a child with UTI when abnormalities of urinary tract is noted on ultrasound. Or the child is diagnosed to have pyelonephritis. This scan is useful to show the split renal function and the presence of renal scarring. The procedure involves intravenous cannulation followed by injection of radioactive material DMSA into the vein. The DMSA is taken up by the kidneys and is detected by gamma camera. This picture shows an example of a DMSA scan results, in which the uptake in patient A is normal, whereas there is an area of reduced uptake over top part of left kidney in patient B. When treating a child with urinary tract infection, it is important to ensure that he or she is well hydrated. If the child has vomiting or poor oral intake, intravenous fluids should be considered. Acute cystitis usually responds well to oral antibiotic. The choice of antibiotics include amoxicillin plus clavulinic acid, cefuroxim, or cotrimoxazole. Acute pyelonephritis should be treated with intravenous antibiotic. The options include amoxicillin plus clavulinic acid, cefuroxim, gentamicin, or cefotaxim. Asymptomatic bacteriuria does not require any treatment. The role of antibiotic prophylaxis to prevent recurrence of UTI in children is controversial and not routinely recommended. Its use may be considered in young children with genitourinary tract abnormalities and recurrent urinary tract infections. It is usually given once daily at night. The choice of antibiotics include trimethoprim, nitrofurantoin, and cephalexin. UTI in children needs to be treated properly due to its potential short and long-term complications. The short-term complications include renal abscess, paranephric abscess, and septicemia. The long-term complication is renal scarring, which can lead to renal failure. In summary, urinary tract infection is a common cause of febrile illness in children. 
The symptoms vary according to age group but are very nonspecific in young children. It is important to identify the risk factors. The diagnosis is confirmed with growth of more than 100,000 colony forming unit of single organism per mil of urine. Starting appropriate treatment is paramount in view of potential long-term risk of renal failure. Now please review the case scenario that was given at the beginning of this lecture and try to answer all the questions.